Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn what's new in SQL Server 2016. And uh, SQL Server 2016 CPT is released. So in this demo, we'll be learning list of new features and their brief introduction. Number two, the list will be uploaded on our blog. So you can go ahead and download that list and take a look on new features and their brief introduction. Number three, SQL Server 2016 concepts are brand new for me and brand new for you. So if I haven't explained any feature in detail and you would like to know much more detail about about that particular feature or all the features I would recommend that you go and um, read technical documents about SQL Server 2016 that Microsoft has put out there for more clarification so let's go take a look some take a look on some new features that is introduced in SQL Server 2016 here is the list so our first feature right here it's very exciting query store Query store at name suggests that it, it store the information about the queries and it captures queries, query plans, runtime statistics, etc. And it also can enforce policies to direct SQL Server query processor to execute in specific manner. What it means basically is that in SQL Server 2012, 2008 and uh, uh, 2014, we had somewhat control that how we want SQL Server query processor to think and execute our uh, queries, but not much more than that. In this query store, we have a lot more control over that, and it also contains the query workload history. So you can basically look at uh, your queries that from last one month or last 15 days and look at the workload of that particular query. And it, it basically, this is very useful when it comes to the system wide or database level performance analysis and troubleshooting. And uh, in order to support this query store new feature, they have put together uh, some system views, which when we will install SQL Server and I'll show you what are the system views to support query store new feature. The other, next feature, uh, live query statistics, this is very exciting feature. You remember in SQL Server 2008 or SQL Server 2012, 2014, whenever we wanted to look at the query plans, we will actual uh, query plans what we will do is execute that query once that query is executed we will get a query plan but in this case with this live query statistics uh, it will give us the query plan that is being executed at the moment so all the live queries you can see basically on SQL Server Management Studio that um, what it's doing, what is the plan, and it gives us also the consumption of physical resources such as CPU and memory when the query is running, that how much those physical resources are being consumed when this particular query is running. And once you see that uh, query plan, you can basically drill down further into live running queries from its query plan. And it helps you watch change of statistics during query execution once you do that. And these two things basically work together. So the history will be stored in query store and you can go back and look at the query execution plan and see that uh, if the statistics that you have put together on your particular database for a particular query are they really being used because b before that we had to run a report and see that um, if the statistics are really being used after you know the query is finished but now you can look at the live query and see if those st statistics that you have put together to uh, support the performance of a particular query if they are being used and our next feature is native JSON support. Uh, JSON is basically language independent data interchange uh, format. If we wanted to change our uh, data from transactional to non-transactional for storage purposes, uh, then we can go ahead in SQL Server 2014 uh, does support JSON. So JSON is basically very popular among modern web and mobile applications and it's alternate to XML. The reason that uh, in, in previous version 2012 and 2014, if we wanted to uh, convert or interchange our format from uh, transactional to non-transactional, uh, non then it was uh, converting into XML and uh, the parsing would take a whole lot of time uh, in XML if we use XML. But uh, since um, we have the support, JSON support now, and the parsing is done via standard Java uh, script function, so it is much easier and faster. And um, uh, SQL Server 2016 has introduced several T-SQL uh, constructs 
to uh, facilitate uh, JSON support. So uh, next uh, next feature right here is uh, my favorite feature. This is a temporal data uh, database support. What it does is a temporal database uh, database support is that it keeps track of your data and it keeps the current and the history of the data. And uh, uh, you remember in. 2012 and 2014 whenever we need to restore uh, data in point in time we had to basically put our database in restore mode and then restore our transactional or our uh, other backups in order to get our uh, data to a certain point in time but it, with this with temporal database support what we can do is basically uh, we have uh, checkpoints and we can go ahead and um, restore our database to any known state without the downtime and this is the this is the biggest uh, thing for me I, I i think that uh, dba is going to love this feature uh, temporal database support and it also helped regulate the compliance and audit because uh, if um, data was dele deleted a couple days ago or an hour ago or whatever the case may be then compliance and audit can uh, be easily performed on the database and also uh, slowly changing dimensions we had to do a lot of manual work in order to implement our slowly changing dimension in our database but with the temporal database support it is much easier the next up here it goes to the security uh, always encrypted um, if you remember that uh, we could encrypt uh, we could uh, implement in SQL Server the TDE um, and uh, all uh, other data masking on the SQL Server side the master key was stored in SQL side so whatever uh, we, we could basically go ahead and encrypt our data um, uh, using TDE and it will happen only on the SQL side so if uh, application needs to basically read the data that is encrypted the decryption will happen on the SQL side and when the uh, data will flow towards um, uh, flow over the network uh, for the application or the client whatever the client that is accessing or application that is accessing the data that would be in simple text format so that was a security threat so because if a middleman comes in um, at that time they can read the data in simple text even though the data on SQL Server side was encrypted and um, uh, application needed the decrypted data and the master key was stored on SQL Server side. But in SQL Server 2016, this has changed. The master key basically is stored on application side. So the data that flows from uh, SQL Server to the application over the network is also encrypted. So this is a huge gain as far as um, the security goes. So uh, you don't have to change uh, a lot of uh, your um, uh, configuration as far as the application goes because uh, sometimes you think that uh, this is a, a core change and there might be a lot of uh, uh, changing uh, needed to be done on application side. That is not the case. A simple SSIS package that you can uh, basically download and run that will support this. Uh, there, there is no changes in application um, M not much changes but SSIS package will run and your uh, application will start basically uh, taking advantage of always encrypted and that master key will reside on our client or application server that way our data is always secure it is secure uh, at rest which is uh, on SQL server and it is secure in motion when it is going towards uh, the application over the network so it is uh, a great security feature as far as uh, data encryption goes um, before in, uh, uh, in in SQL Server uh, 2014 and SQL Server 2012 we had uh, uh, we, we didn't have a row level security now it, this is also a DBS uh, a gain right here that you can basically the security can be defined on a complete row uh, and rather than you know we had a column uh, security but uh, this is uh, uh, again a, a good basically gain for DBAs column store we did have column stores uh, in SQL Server 2014 however uh, we couldn't put a column store indexes on in memory tables but in SQL Server 2016 it's changed you can basically go ahead and put column store indexes on your in memory table for higher throughput because you um, if you wanted to 
put your data in data warehouse uh, and retrieve the data from the data warehouse you can bring it in uh, in the memory and put a column store indexes and that makes the throughput really fast so this is also a good gain as far as sql server 2016 features concerns uh polybase this is uh, again the um this is we're entering into a new era where Hadoop is uh, basically becoming very popular. So um, in order to support that, they have uh, introduced, Microsoft has introduced in 2016, po uh, poly-based right here, query relational and non-relational data. So example up here is that uh, if you have your database, um, um, let's say that uh, uh, employee that has uh, uh, employee table and all the information that we have uh, in transactional uh, database, which is SQL, and we have all the other information uh, that is in Hadoop, um, and you wanted to go ahead and basically uh, retrieve the data, um, employee behavior. Uh, I think the good example would be that uh, if you are a, a, a driver, you know, that where uh, your, your driver uh, history uh, that would be captured and put in Hadoop because uh, it's easier uh, to put uh, non-transactional data up there. So it's basically uh, relational and non-relational data put together. And uh, there's a, uh, when we install SQL Server, I'll show you that uh, basically it is supported with an external table which combine the uh, relational and non-relational. But this feature is also going to be a very big feature as far as SQL Server 2016 uh, concerns. Next up here is uh, advanced analytics. This is uh, the BI side of the SQL Server 2016. This is again a big feature. Uh, the, uh, this is about examining your data. And uh, if you wanted to examine your data for, um, uh, there, there is a little bit of uh, uh, data examination and all that in SQL Server 2014, but it's not as robust as this is because Microsoft, what they did, uh, if you uh, are using, um, one thing that I wanted to ma mention up here, uh, the whole thing, uh, SQL 2016, is really they have made a whole lot of dependency on your um, cloud-based um, uh, architecture. So uh, this advanced analytics, uh, they have put the template on Microsoft Azure where you can download uh, some of the template uh, uh, related to your industry, whatever the industry that you're working in, uh, is it manufacturing, banking, or whatever, and you would like to basically examine your data, you can go ahead and download that um, template and hook it up with your existing SQL server and uh, uh, look at uh, analyze your data in that and that's that's a, a huge win for uh, BI as far as SQL server 2016 concerned and other BI uh, it's uh, also now supported on mobile devices BI is uh, supported on mobile devices this is huge gain and right now what um, the, the third party, uh, they're using the application called DataZen. Uh, that is the application that is basically uh, integrated um, with the SQL Server. It supports SQL Server at the back end and uh, Windows and um, Apple, Android and HTML5. These are the mobile devices at this moment, 2016 is supporting. Uh, next is uh, Data Stretch. This is uh, one of my favorite, uh, but it does involve um, MS Azure. So what you need to do is basically if you have a huge table, your data history table, and you have um, in manufacturing some of the warranty is about 20 years. So you do have, a you do have to have your 20 years worth of data. But um, that data is basically if you keep it in your <coughs> disks, um, at local, it's very expensive. Those disks are very expensive. So um, you, a lot of people are basically was asking Microsoft that um, if they can have a solution that they can pull their data, uh, put their data, the historical data into uh, um, storage that is not as expensive. However, they, they do want that data to be accessible in uh, um, you know timely fashion so data stretch this is a completely new feature uh, again so that would that would make um, you know it possible for us to put our historical data in uh, ms azure and uh, you have to turn on the feature in sql server when we install sql server i'll show you that how to enable the data stretch 
um, on SQL Server 2016. And then you can go ahead and basically put your historical data in uh, Microsoft Azure. And uh, uh, the, really, the throughput is not bad. Uh, it, it, it has a latency, maybe uh, usually on local drive, it would take one second. And on MS Azure, it might take three seconds. So it's a win-win situation. It's not bad. Um, uh, the next up here is uh, SQL Server Data Tools. Uh, if you remember that if you install SQL Server Data Tools, it didn't have all the Visual Studio features. But um, Microsoft has promised to that uh, SQL Server Data Tools has all the Visual Studio, most of the Visual Studio features. Uh, I haven't installed the uh, Microsoft uh, uh, SSDT 2016, so we will find out that uh, how many features of Visual Studio basically is involved, is included in SQL Server Data Tool. So this was a, a quick overview of uh, new features. I am going to put another video that would be the enhancement um, of uh, uh, enhancement that was done in SQL Server 2016 from SQL Server uh, 2014. So stay tuned for the enhancement video. Uh, both video put together would give us a, a really a head start on our SQL Server 2016. And I hope this demo.